Thanks for listening to the Suzy Larson Life Podcast, available thanks to support from listeners like you. It's only just a matter of Welcome to Suzy Larson Live. Always so honored to get to spend this time with you. In fact, I look forward to bringing you conversations every single day that hopefully inspire you in your faith walk, that deepen your understanding of God's Word, and that heightens your awareness of His very real presence in your life. Well, if you listen often enough, you know that every month we have our good friend Dr. Troy Sproul on the show to talk about health and the healing process. We're not taking questions today because we have a backlog of questions that have come in on the text line, so we're going to tackle those. But also, just quick announcement before we hear from Dr. Troy. Um, If you're brand new to the Faith Radio family, we would love to get a welcome packet into your hands. Just hop on our website, myfaithradio.com, and request one. And you'll get all kinds of great information about our vision, our heart behind why we do what we do, a program schedule, and a few other fun things. Also, a quick caveat here. Dr. Troy joins us every month uh, to offer um, answers to your questions and a bigger picture of health and the healing process. But we do need to know, uh, need you to know that he's not here to diagnose over the air. We always want you to check with your doctor before making changes to your health program. So let me tell you about my guests. We'll get him on the show. Dr. Troy is the founder and CEO of Synapse Center for Health and Healing, located in Egan, Minnesota. He started Synapse over 26 years ago with a vision to bring an integrative approach to healthcare through functional medicine, making Synapse an internationally known center for true health. Dr. Troy, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, as always. Looking forward to this conversation. What's God been talking to you about these days? So I am going to read from Daniel. So I've been doing uh, some digging on Daniel, and um, it it had to do more with uh, just I was investigating the Magi, and uh, just uh, that that's just intriguing. That's a whole Mm -hmm. different story, but uh, but who they were and where they came from and stuff. But then I, as part of that, they're they're mentioned in Daniel, and then uh, this time of the year. is the majority, that's when people gain the most weight that they're going to gain in their life. Wow, interesting. From from December, uh, from, sorry, from Thanksgiving, I bet. Well, it's actually from Halloween. Whoa, of course, yeah. yeah. So all the candy that's out, even if you don't celebrate it, yeah, it's around yeah. in the stores everywhere. Yeah. From, from October 31st to December 31st and New Year's, and then we do the New Year's resolution thing. So people... People really, really struggle when it, this time of year. And this is when we make these little, little quick decision choices to have that little piece of candy or that little uh, dessert, whatever it is. So so I'm reading from Daniel here. I want to read uh, Daniel 1, 12. Um, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. And what I'm going to talk about is basically Daniel and his diet and, and how he showed up before the king and uh, and his clean eating wow. was observable to the king, and the king's like, "How are you so much better than everyone else around you?" And and we at the the clinic, we do a we're going to be announcing this, so I guess we'll announce it uh, mm-hmm. here. And maybe by the time this airs, it actually has been has been announced. But it's going to be a ten day detox with the docs, and it's really it's similar to just it's the Daniel diet, basically, nice. just like the ten days that Daniel was saying. Uh, Let me show you, and he's just talking about clean eating. Mm. And so Daniel uh, did did a very very good job because like he just had awareness of his body, and what he ate, and he made very conscious choices, even when he was given the opportunity, even when he had the favor of the king and could eat all this big rich food, he didn't, and that that made a difference. He still made good good clean options, and so during this this season of of um. Thanksgiving and then Christmas as we're approaching Christmas here, uh, there's just a lot of food choices and just heading into this season consciously will serve you. And for those of you that need to lose 10 to 15 pounds to do it during the Christmas season feels like such a win. And I'm having a lot of conversations with my uh, program patients right now and I'll I'll celebrate. I know one of them is probably listening right now, um, celebrate a a victory that uh, he was able to lose 40 pounds, and we talked about how to have and host a healthy Thanksgiving dinner, what that would look like this year. And it's okay to not have the dessert that you've historically had because it just doesn't suit your new lifestyle. And so what are some healthy options? And we just started going through some creative healthy options. 
and they were flabbergasted because I could tell he started salivating at just mm. the mm. what we were talking about. So they exist, and and it doesn't have to be uh, the this crazy desserts indulgence kind of numb fest at, at all. Yep, yep. yep, you can go through Thanksgiving. Yep, and eat plenty and still not fall asleep during a football yeah, game watching right, or something right. afterwards and feel toxic and lethargic. Yeah. You know, I've been talking about this quite a bit this month. Uh, because I'm super passionate about finishing the year strong so that you show up with vision and, and revelation into the new year. I've been talking about this for years that just I feel, you know, I feel like the enemy wants to bait us into numbing indulgence. And as like we're as if we're no different than people who don't profess Christ, but we have the hope of the earth alive in us. And, and we're not trying to rain on your parade, but practicing some kind of self-restraint during these months so that you have clear thinking, so that you have space for God, where you're preparing him room, that you can get revelation because there are lessons that God wants you to take with you into the next year. There are visions he wants to give you for the upcoming year. And even committing to some kind of partial fast, you're going to so enjoy the food that you do eat when you're not going hog wild, going, I'm, it's an excuse. I'm going to eat, yes. drink, spend every, you know, overcommit and then wake up feeling toxic. And when you wake up on January 1st that way, you get a bigger hill to climb because you've lost so much ground by all this numbing indulgence. Absolutely. And I, I have an observation to share too, because a lot of people come and they're just, they, they, they don't have love or joy in their life. And these are the fruit of the spirits. The grave of which is love. And, and, Self-discipline is also a fruit of the Spirit. It is, yeah. And we have influence on that. Mm-hmm. We can choose self-discipline during mm-hmm. a season like this. And I've observed how that can be the caveat for all for everything else to start to come. And you yeah. build into and experience joy and love. All mm-hmm. of a sudden, because you were disciplined and you chose to be disciplined with the food, and, and now you're actually thankful and grateful for God, not because of the food they're serving at the banquet, but because of God and the other things in your life. And you were disciplined through this process. Watch what happens in your life. Amen. Watch how the other stuff starts to, the other fruits start to, to just fill you up. Amen. You know, and I would even submit that our, the fruit of the spirit, you know, Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Abide in the vine and you'll bear much fruit. And I haven't thought this all the way through, so I'll have to come back to it. But I'm just thinking that the fruit all, um, require our participation and choices. You choose peace, you choose joy, but you can't accomplish those things apart from the Holy Spirit, right? So it's not like they just happen by osmosis, like you default to peace or you default to self-control. Choose this day, blessing or curse, life or death. Choose so that you and your family may live. I think there's something really, again, that's another topic that we could maybe spend a whole hour on because I'm fascinated at the thought. There are days when, you know, let the peace of God rule in you. That means you have a choice, right? Yes. Let peace rule and reign in your heart. So we have some choices around will we partner with God and he's not asking us to do something he's not empowering us to do. Right. Absolutely. There, there's an action step and sometimes the action step is actively surrendering, but sometimes yeah. it's an action. Yeah. And so we yeah. see that a lot. Even mm-hmm. Even with Moses, people had to choose to to leave, I was flabbergasted when I found out um, that not all of the Jews chose to go with, with yeah. Moses, and so mm-hmm. that that to me is just remarkably. And I, forty years is a long time for them to to um, to go through the desert there, but there was a lot of action, and there was still God still needed them to make choices mm-hmm. daily. Yeah, Amen, yep. Amen. All right, so we're going to d- tackle some questions here. Um, here's one from Kathy. Uh, hi, could you explain what sensory motor dysregulation is going through a lot of stressful emotions? Sensory motor dysregulation. Let's say you. So uh, sensory motor dysregulation generally is something we see when, um, uh, so I'll break it down. Sensory, basically, just think of all of your senses, visual, auditory, uh, even your own thoughts, but uh, certain things become overwhelming. So their capacity to input the sensory experience, which comes through an area of the brain called the, the, the thalamus, uh, that sensory stuff can become overwhelming, but there's actually a motor output dysfunction that comes from that. So sometimes like people will go into Walmart or Costco and the lights are too bright and they get a migraine. That's an example of a sensory motor dis- dysfunction. Mm-hmm. You're basically hearing something, seeing something, and it's causing a physical reaction in the body that's not an appropriate reaction. So there's a gating mechanism and a filtering mechanism that's not quite working properly. Um, this is this is one of my favorite things to work with because it is a functional 
scenario. Mm, interesting. There's, there's, there's very much a functional component that's not working. It can be anything from inflammation, infection, stuff like that still. Uh, but there's an integration uh, problem and you have to retrain the brain uh, in a different way and see, okay, what's affecting that filter? Because the thalamus is just a filter. So just like a filter in your kitchen that might get clogged or full, you have to you have to drain it. And the dishwasher, the filter gets clogged up stuff, so you have to clean it out. Same thing in our brain. Our thalamus, which is our filter, has to be cleaned out. So what clogs the filter? Well, excessive TV watching, excessive cell phones. Um, it can be things. Interesting. It can be things like um, dehydration that make your your receptors in the ears send signals. EMF from cell towers and things that are stimulating that you don't even know can be triggering different things. So we have to find out what's causing that excessive feedback to that filtering system and then clean the filter. Wow. This is, I know more about like mass cell type stuff. Uh, I, first of all, I want to testify. I'm healthier than I've ever been. I'm, I'm amazed at how God is restoring me one step at a time. So grateful. But I will say we, we our church is an amazing church, big church. It's an old building. And so the, the, there's a hallway that kind of runs all the way around and it's a wide hallway, but it's still too narrow for a big church. There's no gathering area. So it's like we're herded, you know, we're all, and the strength of the perfume of every, yes, yeah. every Sunday, I feel like I'm like, and I'm not hypersensitive to things anymore, no. but I, I almost can't bear it. Yeah. So w- what's that? I mean, is it just strong perfume <laughs> in no. the in the the way that the building is? But I mean, it's no, it's still so. Yeah, that's that's means your nerves are close to threshold that okay. sense that stuff because of past stuff. Oh, okay. So people with multiple chemical sim- sensitivity are the same way. Hmm. Um, they're just they they don't have a large capacity to handle that stuff because their nerves are sensitive to it. So it doesn't take a lot to exceed that. Now, mm-hmm. as you go on through time uh, and things improve that way, that might come back. It's hard to do as we age. It's easier to do when we're in our 20s. And then um, also uh, perfumes in particular have aldehydes in them. And so your body has to detoxify that. It's amazing. And so the aldehydes themselves can actually cause a problem. And we do see a significant problem, especially with um, unnatural scents. Uh, because they just they're not they're not natural and you know back in two thousand years ago they used to have perfumes from essence of flowers and stuff mm-hmm. they make these things out of oils and frankincense frankincense yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. it's different um, is it's a little bit different there are mm-hmm. healthier versions of it but there are very unhealthy versions of that so it can't be good for people even who don't have a, a who aren't maxed out Correct. in the threshold yeah. right because exactly. you're it, it seems it's so chemical I mean yeah. it's, I, I smell the chemicals in it well I'll say I'll say another one so uh, candles are known Yee. known toxins really for yes mm. so there's <clears throat> a lot of scented candles now candles themselves are good if they're wax and, and soy candles well maybe yeah. they're less sooty Yep. No. Are he... we bargaining? Now? Okay. <laughs> I want please, my please. want my candles yeah. to be good. <laughs> What's a good candle? <laughs> um, uh, so uh, anything that burns oil is is okay. good. So if it's again, if it has a whole bunch of ingredients in the making of the candle, okay. interesting. It's bad if they add any type of chemicals or artificial, then it's bad. Mm. And so, so it, you're really releasing chemicals in the air. You are. We've we had we have patients who got cancer who worked in a candle shop, and that's because of just the chemicals from the off gassing wow. and the burning wow. of the candles. Wow. So, in some of the stores, as we go to break, some of the stores you go in where you have a thousand perfumes. To me, it's the same as walking down the pesticide aisle, you know, in the fertilizer aisle at a you know home improvement yeah. store. It's yep. the same thing to me. Yeah, I almost it can't bear it. Wow. Okay, we're going to take a break. We're going to answer more questions. So interesting. Thanks for that question. And uh, we're going to talk about um, triglyceride levels when we come back. So, And we'll answer lots more questions. Troy's super excited about the triglyceride question. Dr. Troy Sproul is my guest today. This is Susie Larson Live. We'll be back in a minute. This is Susie Larson, host of Susie Larson Live. Christmas is my favorite time of year. I remember back in our young years when we were struggling to make ends meet, and someone surprised us with bags of groceries and gifts under the tree. All these years later now, we love to surprise others who have a need. Maybe you know someone who has a need this Christmas. You can give hope to someone this Christmas this year by sharing their story at MyFaithRadio.com. Help us help them and be a blessing to someone this year on MyFaithRadio.com.
Hope your day is fantastic. Thanks so much for tuning in to Susie Larson Live. Our good friend, Dr. Troy Spurl. He is CEO and founder of Synapse Center for Health and Healing from Egan, Minnesota. He joins us today and joins us every month. And we're not taking uh, live text today because we have a backlog of questions from last month. We're trying to tackle those as best we can. So Carmen writes in, wondering if Dr. Troy has any ideas of what she could do to get her triglycerides down. She said she was going through cancer treatments 13 years ago. They gave her Lupron shots to stop estrogen because she had breast cancer and the shots made her triglycerides go up to over 2,000. Now those uh, levels are rising again. She's thinking it's because she's going into or as in menopause, wondering what she should do. Yeah, so this is a very unique um, scenario. Triglycerides in general, though, uh, I'll, I'll talk from that point of view. Just in general, triglycerides go up with carbs. So the more carbs you eat. So some people, if you just stick to a 100 gram or lower carb value, that can start to lower them. However, this is a tricky scenario. So when when with that history, that tells me that there's a couple different options that you have here. If they start to go up with menopause, again, it's because the, the estrogen is going down. But when your estrogen goes down like that, your ovaries stop working because there's that's what produces estrogen excuse me, estrogen. And so that duty now falls onto the adrenal glands. So your adrenal glands basically are not very good at making estrogen, but they try. So that becomes a very stressful event for the adrenal glands. That's your stress gland. Well, the adrenal gland basically will secrete things like cortisol, adrenaline, um, and they have an impact on other hormones, thyroid hormone, insulin, so there is a secondary effect when you have what we call adrenal distress or adrenal stress. It can have a secondary effect when it comes to the, the blood sugar and insulin. So my first question would be, is menopause causing your blood sugars to also go up, causing your, mm. your insulin to go up? If that's the case, the first thing you want to do is support the adrenal glands. You support the adrenal glands by getting more sleep. Vitamin C helps the adrenal glands. Um, any type of stress management helps the adrenal glands. Uh, one of the things that helps tremendously if the blood sugar is going up is an herbal called berberine. Berberine will actually help pull the sugar from outside in the blood vessels into the cells. It helps insulin become more sensitive, kind of unlocks the the, the door a little bit there. Uh, and then other other things like ashwagandha and stuff can help too at calming the adrenal glands. But you want to go into adrenal support mode and uh, specifically if blood sugar or insulin... Uh, or hemoglobin A1C start to get a little bit high in lab work, that tells you it's because the sugars are starting to accumulate and the triglycerides, so that that mimics having a high-carb diet, even if you're not having a high-carb diet. Mm, Wow. Okay. Here's a question. Would love to know if there's reliable research behind the anti-inflammatory diet and uh, also your thoughts on shade vegetables. Uh, So yes, there's uh, plenty of research on anti-inflammatory diet that's that's very, very uh, good, um, but also at the same time, keep in mind um, uh, that anti-inflammatory diet for one person might be different than another person. So there's anti-inflammatory diet, but whether or not a food traditionally causes inflammation, but also for individuals, that could be different. And so some people, like, like we've said in the past, can't tolerate an apple or or garlic because they have SIBO or because they have an allergy or sensitivity to that particular that food. So uh, plenty of research on anti-inflammatory. Uh, let me see. Going off the top of my head, uh, that research started back with uh, is a medical doctor in the 70s who wrote a book uh, about heart disease, and he called it the aerobic revolution. Hmm. Uh, and it basically was to get people... Um, running to, to reduce the risk of heart disease. And then people got really, really good at running, kept obesity levels down, and they weren't even close to what they are right now. And then he ended up having some people become marathoners that uh, um, still passed away 10, 15 years later. And that's when he wrote the book, The Antioxidant Revolution. Wow. And so the antioxidants primarily come from um, our diet. And so he wrote that book in the 80s. Hmm. So that's how long we've been studying this. Wow. And uh, one of my mentors, uh, uh, he's been going since the 50s uh, studying vitamin C and antioxidants. And uh, um, he actually worked with Linus Pauling. So that tells you 
for do you know who Linus Pauling is? I don't. You're giving me that, that yeah, yeah. look. Okay, yeah, so, I wish I knew. Oh yeah, us science geeky people really, well, he's, yeah. he's like... Uh, well, Linus, how could he not so, be? So let's see, yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, right, Linus Pauling. Yeah. So uh, no, he's the only person to win two Nobel Prizes. Wow. Totally so like, uh, should know that. Wow. Well, yeah, so he's, he, he was very... But he studied vitamin C and very, very mm-hmm. uh, gifted man, but uh, a lot of... Um, a lot of the antioxidants... Are, are part of the anti-inflammatory diet. So mm-hmm. there's there's probably a couple million documents when it comes to the wow. actual benefit of antioxidants and in particular, but now with the anti-inflammatory diet too. I know we've touched on this, but it feels like it's it it's really bears repeating in this context of this conversation. I have a, a old college friend who was an extreme athlete and do the you know cross country skiing, Berka binder, like long, long distance, high intensity, and ended up with colon cancer. And they doctors really, and this was traditional medicine, said they believe that she got cancer because she was doing extreme exercise and not doing any antioxidants yes. after her workouts. Yep. So to explain that, what happened with the free radicals? So that's exactly. Uh, the book they, that this uh, doctor, and I can't remember his name, but uh, the aerobic, yeah, Kenneth Cooper, thank you. Hmm. Yeah, producer Angie. Yeah, yeah. To the Angie. rescue, yes. Come on. Uh, Dr. Kenneth Cooper, and um, basically, when you exercise, uh, you're breaking your muscle down. So there's inflammation that comes from that, and there's free radicals that come from that. And so free radicals are, are basically like these little embers that can burn. And they need to be bound by antioxidants. So things like vitamin E are an antioxidant in the bloodstream that can help protect against this. And let me just fast forward this a little bit. If you don't have the antioxidant, vitamin E in the bloodstream in high quantities, and those embers kind of, the free radicals from exercise, kind of start to fall onto the blood vessels, guess what happens? Well, you don't have to guess. I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. That would be a horrible show. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you end up getting these uh, uh, cells, they're called foam cells, that send a signal to bring in cholesterol so cholesterol can patch wow. the hole. So hardening of the arteries or stiffening of the arteries is because you've had damage to the lining of the artery and your immune cell, your system, is saying we need this patched up so we don't have a big hole in our artery here. So it's actually a response to free radicals and or other wow. things that cause problems like like like, like really small, tiny infections. And that's what causes the problems that lead to hardening, or hardening of the arteries. So taking cholesterol medication to stop the placking is not the solution. The real problem is what caused the free radicals and what would happen if we had enough antioxidants like vitamin E to prevent that damage from happening. Cancer is the same thing. So cancer is basically the genes inside the cell don't have the antioxidant defense mechanisms to protect against the inflammation that's occurring inside that cell. Mm, wow. We need antioxidants. Fruit and vegetables are where they come from. Antioxidant supplements are also helpful, but we primarily get them from fruit and vegetables. Wow. So circling back to the, my friend's story, after a workout, even a light workout, an apple would be probably great, right? Or some um, organic blueberries or something yep. like that. Absolutely. And there's a, there are a lot of other things that offer benefit um, to uh, antioxidant protection and, and combination of free radicals, fiber and making sure you're having regular bowel movements and good healthy fiber and good bacteria in the bowel can also protect you. Hmm. So so it's it's much more than just eating, but f- definitely an apple. That definitely helps. Uh, that's, a, that's a big part of it. We want things to, to rejuvenate, but also the foundational stuff of good probiotics, good bacteria in, in your gut can help protect you against something like that because they can actually produce uh, antioxidants of their own. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Mary says that she had a total hysterectomy, ovaries removed years ago, no current hormone replacement. Why might I still be having hot flashes or something similar from time to time? Um, so hot flashes aren't actually from um, the ovaries per se, but they hot flashes are from your brain's lack of sensing uh, different things in the body. So generally speaking, it that means there's a problem either with the adrenal glands and or the liver system. But um, there's a feedback mechanism to an area of the brain called the hypothalamus, and it it kind of re- regulates your body's temperature. And so most commonly, it's an adrenal thing, meaning uh, there's a the, the adrenal glands, again, they're a stress gland. And if you don't have the, the hormone, it's going to send a stress signal back to the brain. People who don't sleep enough, people who have had a, a stressful diet or stressful life. Some people 
um, have had quite a bit they've had to, to, mm-hmm. to deal with. Um, any type of mental, chemical, or physical distress, intestinal inflammation is part of that, can knock down your adrenals. And so uh, that is the number one thing we tend to work on is helping them with their adrenal function to stop their hot flashes. And so you have to regulate the, that hypothalamus part of the brain. I'm going to say another thing. Mycotoxins or Lyme toxins, biotoxins, impact receptors in the brain called leptin receptors that stimulate the hypothalamus. So it makes that area of the brain more sensitive, so it takes very little signals or feedback to the brain to cause Mm. the hot flash. So there can be stuff like the environment you live in can just be moldy. And I just just had this conversation yesterday with a patient where we identified it was her apartment that was causing uh, her issues. I asked her to move out of her apartment for a couple weeks, uh, go somewhere, go to a family member's house and see if she felt any different. That was our test we did. And she said it was night and day. Wow. And so um, that we knew there was something in her apartment. Wow. All right, just a few minutes before our break here, uh, Rosella says, please ask Dr. Troy if leaving my radio on all night uh, reduces the quality of my sleep. I fall asleep easily and occasionally catch something being said on the radio. I often sleep for 10 hours since I had open surgery for PMP appendix cancer three years ago. Thoughts? So... Uh, I don't have any scientific uh, evidence of this, but I do suspect it disrupts sleep, and I'm not mm. a fan. Mm. But I have people say it's the only way they can get to sleep and, and other things like that. And I just think uh, there are healthier ways. Um, if someone's desperate, um, yes, it can help. It helps some people actually think less drifting off into sleep. Um, I used to, People used to tell me that they had, they'd have to fall asleep with the TV on, and it's the only way they could sleep, and... And, um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that. So I try and encourage people to find a different way mm-hmm. and uh, to keep something like that out of the room if you can. Right. And, again, you'd be surprised getting the phone out of the room, what a difference that would make. Yeah. But if you even have the phone and have it maybe six, seven, eight feet away from you, but put on the Abide app. We've covered that on the show before. There's a timer. You can do 30 minutes or a couple yeah. hours. But you just if your brain is just too busy... It just gives you, has you take deep breaths. It's quoting scripture. You can help yourself just sort of settle in and then it automatically turns off. And then maybe that's something like that. Yes. I, but I will, I'm going to put a caveat in there because I have a, I have someone who was severely addicted to, to drugs, uh, heroin, um, horrible, horrible um, experience as far as just what that led to as far as living on the streets and stuff like that. And recently is now eight months clean of everything, doing just fantastic. And she she plays praise and worship all night long. Mm. And that works for her mm-hmm. right now. So I am not interfering with that. Right. I'm like, keep going. It's working. Right. This is amazing. It's miraculous what we're seeing uh, with you. So just keep going. Stay the course. So uh, again, everything is circumstantial. And I do think certain things will pour into you that way. And if it brings some level of... of peace and mm-hmm. calm, that could be a different story. If, if you start thinking about work, then that's not right. Right. And I was going to say, especially if you're in a season of warfare. Yes. You know, if you're in a season where you're there is spiritual warfare and the enemy is coming in, I th- I would do that. I yes. would just, you know, it's like even if you're waking up, you're hearing the worship music and, yeah. you know, so yeah. I love that caveat very much. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, questions about elbows and tendons, trouble for two years Is there something going on in the elbow? Been to the doctor twice. Uh, Times fingers have gotten numb. When using the arm, it feels like a line or a bump on my elbow, tender in that area. Uh, What causes weakness in the forearm? And then also sciatic nerve. What can you do for that? So a couple questions. Dr. Troy Spurls, my guest. We'll keep tackling these questions. We got lots of them. We'll do our best. We'll be back in a minute. Really glad to have you listening today. I'm Susie Larson. This is Susie Larson Live. Dr. Troy Spurl is our guest today. He joins us every month for health and the healing process, answering questions, doing our best to help you take your next steps towards health and healing. We're not taking live questions on the text line today. We're recording because we have so many questions from past shows that we haven't been able to address. So we're doing our best, working our way through them. And I wanted to get this one because I just landed on it. I thought, wow, this is important. It says, bless you for such an incredible 
incredible show. I'm really grateful to Dr. Troy for these insights. One thing I struggle with, though, is hearing these shows and becoming obsessed and anxious with making healthy choices. How do you find the balance where you're caring for yourself as the image of God, but not making health an idol? Both of us want to shout from the mountaintops. This is like a favorite best question ever. What do you say? Yep. Uh, I love it because uh, this is this is great awareness and this is very, very true. So a lot of what we do to help people get from point A to point B is when you're when you're kind of sick and, and you're you're not feeling the best. So these are recommendations to get things started. But uh, it, it's one of these things where our, our world is so toxic right now and things are are very, very challenging. So this is my breakdown of that question. This is what mm-hmm. I tell people. We're always meant to strive for, for perfection, knowing we're going to fall short. And when we fall short, we don't beat ourselves up. We just praise God for covering the gap, covering Love the that. difference. So Love that's that. part of it, number one. Number two, this is our temple. It's meant to honor God. And so that doesn't mean your temple doesn't get dirty. That's like not opening the door to your temple. Hmm. So you just have to allow it to get to, to get dirty by bringing, bringing uh, things in, but you've got to clean it up. So you can't live in that dirty state. So it's not about getting it right all the time. You have to really just uh, take care of your temple. And, 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 and so with that being said, there are things that you have to just have awareness that this type of food might be bad for you. Well, when I am doing well and therefore my temple is being taken care of, and mentally, chemically, and physically, I'm in a good place, I'm healthy. I'm going to live an 80-20 lifestyle, meaning 80% of the time I'm eating clean, doing everything that I can, especially at home where I can control it. 20% of the time I'm going to allow things in that are going to uh, dirty my temple, so to speak, but then I'm going to clean it up. And so, but only Give an certain example things. of that because you eat pretty clean. So. Um, well, I'll, I'll have dairy. I'll, I'll go See, out. he goes hog wild. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I have I had blue cheese the other day. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So <laughs> no. So when it, like uh, I thought even, I knew you. I'll even <laughs> well I'll have like um, like French fries. Yeah, I love I'll, French fries. I will have French fries probably three times a year, mm. but I'll have them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and or I'll have uh, when I'm going out, or if uh, if someone's making a dessert in their home and. Uh, or some, uh, I don't really eat dessert, but it, I, something that I normally wouldn't eat, but it's there. I'll, I might have some of it when I'm out. Uh, How about like chips and guac, like with uh, organic yeah, so chips? Chips is, chips is my weakness. So that's a good yeah, example. Me too. Yeah. So uh, chips is where I, where I would say I struggle. And mm-hmm. so I'll have um, like salt and vinegar chips, one of my favorite mm-hmm. things, but that's, that is the worst thing for me uh, to have consistently. But I just love the, the the taste, the flavor of it, and everything. So, so I will have that on occasion, and so, but not all the time. If I had that as a snack every week, then I'd be um, in big trouble. I just know, know I would. And I am one of those people. Just so everyone knows, uh, I one chip equals one bag. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> a little so more. That's, a little more. That's yeah, yeah man yeah. math right yeah. there. One yeah, chip right. equals one bag. <laughs> yeah. And so, so it is something that uh, you. It's important to know. We're not meant to just not know it. We have to know what's healthy, what's not. But we can't perseverate on it. We can't make it an idol. It is to honor God by taking care of your body. And so part of taking care of your body is to not disrupt the the meeting you're having with the person who God has sent to you mm. to help you in this other area. Food, getting it right, is not meant to disrupt you for, from what your purpose is and all the other stuff too. It can't be a stressor. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you see, again, having worked in fitness for all those years, you would meet people. They were so obsessed with their body, with their workout, with their diet. They were some of the most selfish people you ever want to meet. Yeah. They look amazing, but there's no fruit or life coming out of them because they, they clearly have made their body an idol. And in the same way, um, you might not be a bodybuilder, but if, if health becomes an idol, yeah. you know that because you start to serve it and people are a disruption to that. You know, I mean, you, you're not breaking bread with them. You're not thinking about their life or their story. It's like you're obeying all these rules and you feel proud when you get it right and total condemnation when you get it wrong. Yep. That's religion. That's the law. Exactly. So somehow there's got to be discipline under grace. Yes. And I love that. You said it, you know, a bit ago that you do your best and then you trust God's grace to fill the gaps, yeah. right? That's why we love this question because because although we focus on what we're talking about it, nothing supersedes uh, God and putting God first. And so it's important for everyone to hear 
and to receive this uh, and then and and then actually apply it to glory glorify God. That mm-hmm. that's why we're doing this too because I also believe when you get healthy the 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 best version of you starts to come forward so then God can use you cuz many many are called but only few are actually chosen and few just stand up and say I've got this. Mm-hmm. And one of Satan's tricks is to keep us inflamed to keep us unhealthy so we don't do the work that God has for us. Yeah. And the story we tell ourselves so often to justify our own destruction is kind of amazing. I mean, you even think about, you know, we're talking about diet and health and, and, and then we're stepping it into a bigger story of, of even the gospel. I mean, right. I mean, I'm not connecting these. I'm just saying that analogy applies to the health situation. But how often, like you blow it on a Monday and then you condemn yourself and tell yourself terrible things. But then you're like, I'll start next Monday. So you give yourself a whole week yes. <laughs> to keep blowing it. And so it's not legalism. Uh, it's not obligation. It's invitation. But if you could get a vision, I always say nothing tastes as good as feeling good feels. And so when I have a vision for feeling better, but just so just to be totally honest, I eat fries probably once a month. I totally shouldn't, but I love them. I don't get them. Kev gets some. Yeah. And he's like, I'm getting fries. And he looks at me like, because <laughs> he knows, like, I want a few. And I'll just have a small handful, but I love them. But that is my weakness. So yeah. I, I don't like, you know, I don't always make provision for them, but it's just the salty thing is the chips, yep. the guac. Yep. Oh, my goodness. So, no, I just so you know, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and especially, uh, I love that for you because of how clean you do eat. Mm-hmm. So that's a, that's a good balanced thing mm-hmm. right now too. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. And when you have that in your mind, that it's like not perfection, not performance, oh. it's just, it's faith, obedience, and I want something more for myself. So I'm going to indulge a little bit here or there, going to fully enjoy it, but nothing tastes as good as feeling good feels. And yes. I want to answer, I want to, I want to partner with God for my flourishing and my health. So Angie. Can I add to that? We had Elisa Keaton on recently and she talked about our view of our body needs to change, that it needs to not be about what our body looks like, but the ability of our our body. And she had this beautiful word picture of having a healthy body so that God can put us on like a glove to use us, Mm. which I thought that was such a beautiful That's the way to say it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great, great reminder. Love that that so much. Okay. Um, So I talked about, we're going to tackle this, this Lori wrote in two questions. So I'm going to tackle one before our break. Sciatic nerve, sciatica issues. What do you say? So sciatica is when you have a, the nerve is being impinged. A lot of times it goes through the belly of what we call the piriformis muscle. And so sometimes it's just piriformis syndrome. You can Google piriformis syndrome and there's a stretch that you'll find. And so you can just do that simple stretch. So that's one of the easier fixes. Sometimes the sciatic nerve gets pinched or uh, inflamed or irritated at the level of the spinal cord or somewhere during its uh, journey outside of that piriformis muscle. And so that's usually a physical problem. And that usually requires some level of chiropractic, uh, physical therapy, uh, resting it, but it it definitely can be treated. It's something we see all the times as far as chiropractors in the in the clinic. Uh, but there's one scenario, again, we've talked about the ileocecal valve, but uh, did you know that when your ileocecal valve becomes uh, spasmed and then swollen, in some people it will mimic sciatica? Wow, I it, did not know that. It causes swelling in the pelvic floor, and then so that puts pressure, and if things are aligned just right or you're predisposed to sciatic because of other physical conditions... You can get the pain shooting down your leg that occurs with sciatica from the intestinal problem and or any swelling in the lower abdomen. Mm. So uh, a lot of times, too, sciatica occurs because your hips are twisted. Mm. And so uh, I, I'll say this on air here, but I have the same joke I say to all my patients all the time because I think humor, I think I'm funny. You are funny. Okay. So, yeah. This uh, might not be funny, but you are funny. Yes. Thanks for qualifying. <laughs> don't, don't be bad, sad if but you fail. to all my Christian women out there, if you come in and I assess you and your pelvis is twisted, I will call you a twisted sister. Yeah. <laughs> I will. Every time. And he laughs at himself every time. I do. Time. I sometimes I'm yeah. the only one laughing, but yeah, that's okay. It's hilarious. Yes. It's pretty funny. Okay, we're going to pause. When we come back, we'll talk more about uh, lots of the questions that have come in, but this one was about elbows, tendons, and uh, numbing in the hand and that kind of a thing. Another person's got a question about diet, organic, paleo. Um, Tina says forgiveness. You were talking about this last month, so we're recording these shows back to back. Forgiveness is such a gift in many ways, a gift you give to yourself and to others. Um 
And she also asks, do the supplements for fruit and veggies work if you don't eat enough of the real food? So I'll love for you to answer that one as well. More with Dr. Troy in just a minute. If you'd like to know more about what it means to begin a relationship with Christ or to chat with someone about faith, you can text the word faith to 41224. Every day is a great day when we get to have Dr. Troy Spurl in studio. Today is one of those days. We're taking questions off of the text line, not taking live questions right now because we want so much to honor all the questions that came in last month that we couldn't get to. And uh, Lori asked a question about she's been having issues with elbows, tendons, troubles for two years, something going on in the elbow. Uh, Been to the doc twice. Neither of them took any pics. At times her fingers get numb. When using her arm, it feels like there's a line uh, or a bump on there in her elbow, tender in that area. Any thoughts? Yeah, so with uh, elbows and wrists and things like that, um, the first thing that we always look at is we, we do assess the elbow joint and see if it's something like tennis elbow, that where you're using it uh, over and over in the same type of manner. If that's not there, the most common cause of elbow and, and or wrist stuff is uh, coming from the neck or something called thoracic outlet syndrome. Wow. And so the neck, the nerves come from the neck, and if they're just irritated a little bit, so any type of stress, any type of just our head going forward, is, and as we age, our head tends to go forward. And even nowadays, we see kids with what, what's called text neck, where they're on yeah, their phone so much and right. their heads are going forward. Well, the space that the nerves have to actually come out of the neck becomes smaller and smaller. So they, the nerves start to get irritated, and you lose function with one of the muscles in the arms around the elbow or around the wrist, so it's not balancing the joints. So and all of a sudden you've got one muscle being pulled a little more than the other one and it it's causes this, um, this internal friction or inflammation and you can end up with pain. Now sometimes the pain is a referral down the arm, very similar to sciatica, but it's actually coming from the neck and mm. the impingement there. Or sometimes it's because of the inflammation being induced because of the imbalance in the joint. So when someone comes in, Uh, I'll assess 26 muscle tests of the arm and forearm and even the small muscles in the fingers to find a weakness. And then we'll go up and we'll push on their neck to just uh, slightly take the pressure off that area. And it'll tell us exactly what part of the neck is causing the weakness in that muscle. Interesting. You fix the neck, then you work on the muscle a little bit to to get it back into balance there. And the pain slowly starts to go away. So that's the most common most common one when it comes to any type of elbow and or wrist. X-rays, unless there was uh, a fall or anything, imaging usually is not relevant, Mm. uh, as relevant in these scenarios. Mm. Uh, And so we usually go right to assessing the muscles of the the arm, forearm, and then it almost always leads us back to the neck and and or some of the muscles in the armpit area that can get tight and yeah. pinch the nerve just like sciatica. Exactly. I would thing. imagine if you let that go for too long, you have all these assisting muscles spazzing, you're going to create yes. an, you know secondary problems that you have to deal with. Yes. That yeah. that question didn't come from the sciatica question person, did it? Is it, it the did. same? Really? Yeah. Okay. That's so then, curious. Yeah, you've got a you've got a rotation counter rotation. You've got a category wow. 2 pelvis most likely with a, a with an increased first rib on the opposite side. So this this is a pattern we see all the time. Wow. The pelvis twists, the upper body counter rotates, the rib goes up. Oh, that up, makes so much sense. Causing a, 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 an actual, it, it's wow. like sciatica in the arm, basically. I mean, the fact that you even connected those two, wow. Yeah, we see it all the time. That is amazing. Wow, okay. Uh, Tina wants to know, do supplements for fruit and veggies work if you don't eat enough of the real food? Um, they help, but they don't replace the real food, Mm. but they definitely help. Mm. Uh, but they have to be clean again. So good source because a lot of people or a lot of companies, um, start making supplements because they can make a buck, not because they actually have good ingredients. Sometimes they they get fillers, right? Yeah. Fillers and just the lowest grade of, so they'll, they'll take the end, uh, the, the, the really, really past ripe products, if you will. Oh, wow. so they, they take low grade material. So you got to be very selective on the companies, but yeah, they do have, they do have benefit for sure. Mm, interesting. And you know, there are, um, I take a liquid one that is, it's got loaded with fruits and vegetables, yep. antioxidants, and, and it's high quality. 
And so it's worth looking into some of those, right? I yes, mean, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I just take that in the morning with um, some greens and I shake it up. And But they don't replace fruit and vegetables completely. Yeah. People need to hear that. That's part. important. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see, there's just a few minutes left here. Question for Dr. Troy. Is there a safe diet for a person with a mechanical heart valve? And then she says, he or she says, where might I find a doctor like Dr. Troy in Iowa? You got to form an association, man. I've been saying that, but you're so busy, but not yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, there's some oh, there's some cool things happening. Yeah. So there might be some uh, some uh, a whole bunch of doctors that are talking this way here uh, next couple of years. So yeah, stay tuned. As far as the diet, yeah, there is definitely a heart healthy diet as far as um, uh, the heart valve. So with heart valve, it's basically anything that helps the cardiovascular system. So uh, things that uh, fish oils and the Mediterranean diet. If you can tolerate, you have to make sure that you can tolerate the food. But generally speaking, a heart-healthy diet is a Mediterranean diet with a lot of good, healthy oils um, and anti-inflammatories. Those are the the rich um, vegetables, but you have to be able to tolerate the gluten and some of the dairy that they use in the Mediterranean diet. Um, If you can't tolerate that, then you have to do like a combined Mediterranean diet and anti-inflammatory diet. Hmm. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, you want the good, healthy oils uh, and you want lots of lots of water, but um, the 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 Greeks and the Italians just do such a good job hmm. with how they prepare their their food with oils. That's it's such a healthy way of doing it. And um, even the salads, uh, I love love uh, heart healthy salads with uh, with berries and oils yeah. in there and yeah. different things. Healthy like nuts that. So too, or healthy nuts? Yeah, yep, absolutely. Good. good. Yep. Uh, what's the best way to start a journey of reversing type two diabetes? Ooh, that's love this great. question. I was going to say, I love it too. Yep. Way to go. So that's kind of everything. <laughs> so, yeah. so improve your sleep, improve your exercise, mm-hmm. uh, start to improve the diet, get low glycemic foods, um, get the sugar going into your muscles. So that's exercise, sleep, and diet. Uh, reducing your stress. Slow and steady wins this race. You want to build good, healthy habits. And so uh, one of the fastest things that can help is buy smaller plates for your kitchen. Mm, wow. So you get a plate half the size of what it Very used to good. be, and that actually will start cutting down your portion sizes. And uh, and then just plan walks and or physical exercise 30 minutes after eating, and you'll any extra hunger that comes back won't be there mm. because your muscles will be starving for it, not your stomach. Oh, so good. Yeah. So good. Hey, Dr. Troy, is it even possible to heal the thyroid and get off medicine after being on it for 20 years with Hashimoto's? Yeah, absolutely. It's possible. It, it's not a guarantee. Um, but yes, if your thyroid is still making hormone, it's definitely possible. We've had that. We've had people on uh, hormone uh, replacement for thyroid uh, longer than 20 years and, and uh, diagnosed with Hashimoto's. Mm. Um, and so that's definitely possible. Um, I couldn't even tell you what number, though, whether we're at 40 or 50 percent. It, it'd be somewhere between 40 and 60% of our, our patients are able to get off their medications is wow. a very, 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 um, that's a guess. Okay. So. I've got, we got about one minute um, left and I'm trying to decide uh, which question. Okay. Dr. Troy, why am I getting colds that result in horrible cough approximately every two months? I'm grieving the death of husband of 42 years. Is there a connection? Oh. This has been happening since hubby died two years ago. Wow. Yes. I would say there's a connection. So if uh, there can be a connection, but if it's happening since, uh, since he died, um, there is, there's emotions that can influence our body quite a bit. And so there's a lot of, a lot of stuff there. So I would explore some of the emotional part of it, even if it's lack of forgiveness, if it's uh, resentment, resentment's one, um, that like even being resentful, uh, of being left alone in that mm-hmm. scenario can affect the liver system, which then affects the, the bile duct, if you will. Mm-hmm. And the recurring cough stuff is one of the things we see with, bile acids that build up because your liver and gallbladder and bile system are a little bit uh, compromised. So the the big thing is to make sure, just check the emotions. And then I always go to that liver and and bile duct system. If there's any resentment or unresolved anger towards mm-hmm. the death, uh, make sure that gets resolved, any forgiveness, anything like that. Uh, and uh, that can help quite a bit. So... Wow, thank you. And as we get ready to wrap here, I can't help, I just got to mention this. Is it possible that there's mold in your place? Because that could also cause a recurring cough, right? Yes, absolutely. And same with uh, um, Bartonella. 
Wow. Okay. Thanks, friends, for tuning in. Thank you for your questions. We love you. We trust in God's going to lead you on the best path that he has for your life. That's right out of scripture. We so appreciate doing this journey with you. Dr. Troy, thank you for your time. I know you're such a busy guy. Thank you. I absolutely love it. I always love our conversations. Be blessed. Be at rest. Take the next steps God leads you to. And even in this holiday season, have a presence of mind to be present with God, present with each other, and make the next right choice. We'll meet you back here next time. Thanks for listening to Suzy Larson Live. Podcasts like mine are available because of your support. If it's important to you to hear things that encourage your faith, click the link in the show notes and give now.